exciting today is the day that Jesus is alive I hope you're excited because I really am we are going to have a time of worship so why don't you jump up uh, get excited stretch your arms stretch wiggle your fingers and you're going to sing to God because he is alive and then after that we're going to have a little magic trick <music> guess what's inside this hat inside this hat I don't know if you can see here he is who's that that's the Easter Bunny look at him inside there now I'm gonna put him inside because this is his home can you see inside there he's gonna go inside the hat you can see he's inside the hat and then I want you to say Bippity boppity boo with me. Are you ready? On three. One, two, three. Bippity boppity boo. Where's he gone? Can you see inside the hat? He's gone. He's not there. Should we try and get him back again? Are you ready? On three. One, two, three. Bippity boppity boo. Whoa, there he is. Have a look. He's inside. Now, 
Jesus coming alive was no magic trick. It was the power of God. God overcame death and sin. Jesus died, but then he rose again from the dead. Isn't that amazing? We are now going to have uh, a talk from Megan. So listen up carefully. Hi everyone, I'm Megan and I'm part of the Jubilee Observatory congregation. Today I'll be telling you our story. Before we start, I want to show you this. It's a container and inside is a coin. Can you hear it? Now, if you wanted to get that coin out of this container, how would you do it? Imagine that the container is made of strong, solid rock. The only way to remove our coin is to open the lid. And here's our coin. Now, if you remember from our story on Friday, after Jesus died, he was wrapped in cloths and his body was placed inside the tomb. A huge rock was rolled in front of the tomb and a Roman soldier was guarding the tomb so that no one could get in or out. Let's read the story to find out what happened. I'll have some help from Noah and Abby. We are reading from the Jesus story of the Bible. God's wonderful surprise. Jesus' friends were sad. They would never see their best friend again. How could this happen? Wasn't Jesus the rescuer the king God had promised? It wasn't supposed to end like this, but yes, but who ever said anything about the end? Just before sunrise on the third day, God sent an earthquake and an angel from heaven. When the guards saw the angel, they fell down with fright. The angel rolled the huge stone away, sat on top of it, and waited. At the first glimmer of dawn, Mary Magdalene and other women headed to the tomb to wash Jesus' body. The early morning sun slanted through the ancient olive trees, drops of dew glittering on leaves and grasses, little tears everywhere. The friends walked quietly along the hilly path through the olive groves until they reached the tomb and immediately noticed something odd. It was wide open. They peered through the opening into the dark tomb. But wait, Jesus' body was gone. And something else. A shining man was there with clothes made from lightning. Don't be scared, the angel said. But they couldn't help it. They screamed anyway. The angel asked them, What are you doing here? This is a tomb. And tombs are for dead people. The woman couldn't speak. Jesus isn't dead anymore, he said. He's alive. And their hearts leapt. And then the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for a moment as if they had woken from a nightmare. The other woman rushed home, but Mary stayed behind. How could it be true? Jesus was definitely dead. How could he be alive? Just then, Mary heard someone else in the garden. Perhaps it's the gardener, she thought. He'll know where Jesus' body is. I don't know where Jesus is. I can't find him, Mary said urgently. But it was all right. Jesus knew where she was, and he had found her. Mary! Only one person said her name like that. She could hear her heart thumping. She turned around. She could just make out a figure. She shaded her eyes to see and thought she was dreaming. But she wasn't dreaming. She was seeing. Jesus! Mary fell to the ground. Sudden tears filled her eyes and great sobs shook her whole body. And all she wanted in that moment was to cling to Jesus and never let him go. You'll be able to hold on to me later, Mary, Jesus said gently, and always be close to me. But now, go and tell the others that I'm alive. Mary ran and ran all the way to the city. She had never ran so fast or so far in all her life. She felt she could have run forever. She didn't even feel like her feet touched the ground. The sun seemed to be dancing 
and gleaming and bouncing across the sky, racing with her and shining brighter than she could ever remember in the clear, fresh air. And it seemed to her that morning, as she ran, almost as if the whole world had been made anew, almost as if the whole world was singing for joy. The trees, tiny sounds in the grass, the birds, her heart. Was God really making everything sad come untrue? Was he making even death come untrue? She couldn't wait to tell Jesus' friends. They won't believe it, she laughed. She was right, of course. Isn't that amazing? that Jesus rose from the dead just as he said he would. Jesus kept his promise. Let's talk a bit about promises. How would you feel if someone made a promise to you but didn't keep it? You might feel sad or disappointed or angry. How easy would it be to trust that person the next time they made a promise to you? From today's true story from the Bible, what can we learn about Jesus keeping promises? If Jesus kept his promise about dying and rising from the dead, which is a very hard thing to do, what else can we trust him with? Because Jesus keeps his promises, we can trust him with absolutely everything. Isn't that amazing and worth celebrating today and every day? Let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you died for each one of us and that you rose again just as you said you would. Thank you that you always keep your promises. Thank you, Lord, that you love each one of us and are looking after us just as you promised. We praise you and we celebrate you today. Amen. Now it's time for our memory verse. Bye, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Noah. I'm Abby. And I'm Noah. And we are going to be reminding you of this week's memory verse. This, this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. 1 John 4 verse 10 Let's do it one more time with actions before we add the melody. Why don't all of you join in with us? Ready? Go! go. This, this is love. love. Not, Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. 1 John 4 verse 10 Holiness is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. Oh, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. And sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sin. Oh, this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. Oh, this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sin. To take away our sin Oh, this is love Oh, this is love God sent His Son as a sacrifice To take away our sin
Well, guys, that comes to an end. Thank you so much, Megan, for being with us and sharing with us. I hope you have a fantastic day celebrating that God's not dead. No, he is alive. He rose Jesus from the dead so that we can worship him and we can have a friendship with him. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you soon. Bye.